Get Good once started as a joke, but has since been taken far too seriously by people who stake far too much of their self-esteem on whether or not they can fight a pretend dragon without any friends. Which I guess is indeed what you want. You clearly want to limit the number of people who can enjoy these games. If there's one thing Gamergate, Gamergate taught us, it's that people with no form of enrichment outside of video games can be right dickheads. In the face of its overwhelming challenge, the Soulsborne series is ultimately about not being a fucking dick to other people. The people who need to hear it explicitly don't want to. They don't care. They're selfish. They only view these games through the single lens of how they want to play it, how they engage with the medium, and what they believe is the one true way to experience video games. And that's what I mean when I say that I'm better at video games than you, than all of you. Uh, I am just the best one because I understand uh, video games and you don't. Feel free to go off and die in a ditch somewhere. Yeah. Elden Ring has been released and with it has come a flurry of discourse. But the only real point in this discussion to be acknowledged is that I'm a better Elden Ring player than you. Look, you don't have to warn me. I know. I'm kicking up a hornet's nest here. It's like walking into a crackhead den with the only piece of crack left. I know what I'm getting myself into, and I'm thoroughly prepared for it. No, I'm not talking about the backlash from Jim. I'm talking about the pain and possible brain aneurysm I'm gonna get sitting here watching this abomination. These days, if you want to attempt to enjoy a Jim Sterling video, you must come fully prepared with a bag full of drugs. We had two bags of grass. 75 pellets of mescaline, salt shaker half full of cocaine, high powered blotter acid. Then I quickly forget not everyone else is just like me. It's not a feat easily accomplished. Sitting here watching Jim Sterling while tripping balls will permafry a lot of people, which explains why her sub count has been dropping steadily over the last two years. These days, you want to tune into a video to see some good old corporation bashing, which I approve of, and then you're met with politics, lectures, and reminded every day why gamers suck, and Jim despises them and the industry, even though this is the career path she chose when goddamn Gamergate has to be brought up in 2022 to continue trying to make the same tired arguments you're bound to start isolating your own viewers and it's videos like this one which remind me why I unsubscribed myself a long ass time ago and before you say it no it's not because you transitioned into a woman it's because you transitioned into an utterly unbearable whiny person and we're gonna see that in full display throughout this entire video I got $100 here for groceries. I got $1,400 here for liquor. And I'm gonna stake my entire identity on that. I might not be better at playing the game, but I'm better at enjoying the game than you, than all of you, really. Well, I don't know how to tell you this, but bragging about enjoying a video game more than everyone else is a lot more cringe and elitist in my personal opinion. Especially when you're talking down to people because you feel the way you're enjoying it is the correct way. No, the correct way to enjoy Elden Ring is with a fat bowl of weed, a 12 pack of beer, and half a gram of some penis envy mushrooms. Uh, 1v1 me as we discuss the themes. Bruh. I think that's all that really needs to be acknowledged, but I get paid to make videos so I can't just go, so I suppose we better talk about video games instead of playing them. Well, if people did that, you wouldn't have an audience and a platform where you can preach your politics, so you should be thanking them. You know, I'm not one for the just shut up and play fucking video games rhetoric. <laughs> I thought my jokes were bad. I do, in fact, find it quite tasteless and borderline offensive at times. I'm often told to just shut up and play video games when I dare to talk about industry abuse, or examine game industry trends through a mildly political lens, or when I talk about social issues on my social media. And evidently, people have not told you enough. How many more times do we have to tell you? How many more subscribers must you bleed before it becomes clear to you? The just play games attitude prevalent in the online gaming community is in intellectually lazy, philosophically cowardly, and typifies aggressively apathetic centrism that one finds embodied by the privileged entitlement of a class of nerds that has never had to think about a real problem in their lifetime. All that said, 
If hardcore from software fans could just shut the fuck up and play video games, I think I'd enjoy that very, very much. No, you see toxic gamers who've never had to have a struggle in their lives, even though you all work full time to fully support your hobby and understand life, probably a lot more than Jim, who just sits at home. You are not allowed to tell people who whine about the dumbest shit and insert their own politics into video games to just shut up and play games. Only Jim is allowed to be very critical of that argument and use it at the same time because she has gone through so much in life. You know, sitting at home, eating pizza, donuts, and playing video games all day. You cannot begin to fathom all the life lessons she's learned at home behind a computer screen. Let me specify that. I'm talking about a particular type of supposed, alleged, Hardcore from software fan. Well, obviously the people that aren't real are the best ones to go after. Makes the job for your editor 10 times easier, I could imagine. A new from software game has been unleashed upon the world and with it has come the same tiresome, dreary, circular discourse that occurs whenever FromSoft offers up its particular blend of challenge, depth, beautiful bleakness and obfuscating lore. As per the usual, the endless debate over game difficulty and accessibility has reared its all too familiar head. A discussion that the majority of the internet has already decided is pretty fucking irrelevant by now. Miyazaki has made it final. He doesn't want an easy mode in his games, and like you would expect from a typical westerner. Telling the Japanese man how to make their game. Design an easy mode for this game. Well, that's not what I want. That's not my vision. Can you respect that? Can you just accept my art for what it is? No, you little shit. I'm going to bring this up every single time you release a game till the day I die. And while I usually wade into the fray with embattled diligence to argue that easy modes are perfectly acceptable, optional, and not at all problematic in literally any video game, I'm not going to argue anymore because it's not an argument these days, it's just a performance. Well, I'm glad that we can both agree everything you're saying right now is a performance. Only a completely stubborn and ignorant person would continue to argue in such a serious manner especially after the creator of the game says this is what he wants you're not really in a position to tell the creator of the game if an easy mode would hurt his vision or not if he doesn't feel like he could build his game around having an easy mode then he won't do it and the same goes for every single fucking developer out there you're not the one making the game if the next from software game does have an easy mode then it'll be because he wants it difficulty in elden ring according to him is all designed around hardships and that's the theme they want to continue and if they ever feel like making something more laid back with difficulty options then they will the community is on autopilot with this endlessly repetitive debate there's no hope of a resolution long ago this whole discussion became nothing but an exercise in grandstanding i've pointed out before that for all my show gets accused of repeating points which it does yes actual gamer discourse is itself perpetually recycled garbage the same tiny handful of debate repeating themselves over and over again. Stupid and insignificant controversies surrounding review scores, whether or not a game is too woke for daring to have women and queers in it, the gatekeeping aversion to accessibility in protest of the mythical casualization of video games, and... Uh, that's it, isn't it? You know, you'd figure for someone in the past who used to cover some of the most interesting topics of the industry, she'd be able to smell her own shit, but apparently not. Which surprises me because it's so bad I can smell it through my monitor. These are obviously not the only discussions gamers are having. This is yet again Jim Sterling antagonizing the gaming community, painting them as the typical intolerant geeks. And as for the uh, quote unquote myth of casualization, are you fucking kidding me? Are you gonna sit there and tell me games have not been streamlined to appease to more people who are casual? That shit is practically documented history at this point. That pretty much is all that the full time hardcores who've made their entire identity gaming give a shit about, right? I don't know, maybe not. I don't particularly care anymore. Maybe I left a few more regurgitated topics off the list, but it won't have been many. God, just. Just fuck traditional gamer TM discourse. It's just so, so fucking puerile. Obviously, this is not traditional gamer discussion. It's only traditional to Jim because she hasn't let go of Gamergate in well over eight fucking years. Summarizing this as overall gamer discussion is a bigger lie than you thinking you look good in a dress. 
And I've been doing this job for over 10 years and nothing's been resolved. Nothing has changed. Aw, oh, did Jim think she was going to change the world? Did she think her videos were going to make everybody suddenly be on the same exact page she is? There is no resolution in a world where everybody's a little bitch. Give them everything they want and they will continue to complain. And then there will be people there to laugh at them and it'll be an endless cycle of pure autism. It's never going to change. You've clearly seen that for over 10 years and yet here you are to participate in the exact same conversation yet again. It's the only reason and I decided to even make this video. The amount of bitching is so unbearable, yet so entertaining for those who can handle it. Why did I respond to Jason Scryer's tweet? Why did I do it? Why do I do these things to myself? That's all my replies have been for days. You, get out of here. you know, it really says something when people with more severe disabilities are not going out of their way to say fuck you to people who are giving them suggestions. All Jason Schreier is doing is giving a helpful tip. And then here comes Jim to use her ADHD and memory issues as some sort of crutch when paraplegics aren't doing this shit. Doesn't that say something? Am I crazy? Well, I mean, yes, I am. I'm chalked up full of drugs. But even I can see the sheer lunacy of taking personal offense to a tip. Why do you do it to yourself? Well, clearly it's for the attention, especially when you're centering it around yourself. We could have all been just simping over this selfie, but instead everyone's talking about whether you need a notebook for Elden Ring. Anyway, Elden Ring. It's a very good game. While we're on the topic, it's quite forgiving by Soulsborne standards, but given the series penchant for punishing its players' mistakes, that's not saying too much. Regardless, there's been another shitstorm of debate over how accessible it should be, whether easy modes are the devil, and the merits of obtuse, willfully uninformative game design, and just... God, I'm tired of it. Dog, at some point you gotta be tired of being so tired of it. Because I lost count of how many times you have bitched and moaned about it already. Maybe people wouldn't be unsubscribing if you weren't padding your videos like this. Say your piece or shut the fuck up. Talking about how sick you are of something is not an interesting topic. I know this video solely exists to meet a quota. I know this video is only here to plug in an ad at the end. Your content has become as creatively bankrupt as the industry you criticize so much. That's what I thought as my Twitter replies were inundated. I actually don't want to hear it anymore. The fan base is indeed fucking exhausting. The get good attitude that has festered among hardcore Souls fans for years is truly contemptuous at this stage. Get good once started as a joke, but has since been taken far too seriously by people who stake far too much of their self-esteem on whether or not they can fight a pretend dragon without any friends. Get good is not some dismissive meme. Quite the contrary. It speaks to a truth at the heart of our entire lives. It is, in fact, the best advice anyone could ever give you. Jesus fucking Christ, Jim! What did this fanbase do to you? You're not exactly in the best of shape, so I guarantee you your poor heart will not be able to handle all this salt. At some point, you have to fucking realize you're just being salty. Look at the events that led to this. Your entitled attitude towards Jason Schreier giving a basic tip and then the Elden Ring community coming to put you in check for being a prick towards such a harmless tip is what got you here. Get good is not the problem here. It's jackasses like you and the way you respond towards people giving you helpful tips. So if your whole goal is to make it seem as if the Elden Ring community are the ones being the pricks, congratulations, you failed miserably. Of all the toxic, unbearable tweets you cut brought up it was one of somebody from the community giving helpful advice do you not see the problem here jim it's worth noting that nobody's actually impressed if you're brilliant at video games none of us actually care in fact the more you brag about it as if it's worth a damn the more we think you're fucking pathetic we i the royal we w what's this whole we thing exactly you're speaking on the behalf of a shit ton of people right now. Who are they? People who suck at games? 
Well, I'm one of them, and I certainly don't want you to speak for me. Cause when someone obliterates my ass and see us go, not only do I punch a hole in the wall and throw my keyboard out the window, but I end up admiring their skill. And it pushes me to want to get better. You'd be lying if you said you weren't impressed by people who are good at games. I mean, you can try as hard as you want, but someone beating Elden Ring taking absolutely no damage is way more impressive than anything you've ever done in life. If nobody cared, we wouldn't have esports. If nobody cared, speedrunning wouldn't be popular. If nobody cared, there wouldn't be pro players who make more than either of us will ever make in our lifetime sitting down and just playing a few matches in one day. You know who people don't care about? People who are bad at video games. Unless it's someone like DSP Gaming. It's okay to feel accomplished at making your way through a particularly challenging video game, but once you start talking about it as if it makes you better than other people, if you start sneering at those who needed help and bemoaning video games being made more welcoming to newcomers or those with disabilities, you can just go ahead and fuck yourself. Is that what you think happened to you? Do you really think that's what get good means as well? We've seen how you react to help. What is it that you said again? Oh yeah, fuck this. Literally fuck yourself, because Lord knows I don't think you should inflict your pointless little genitals on anybody else. Excess salt intake is a deadly poison to the body. There's no debate to be had here. No argument. I could actually provide a litany of reasons why accessibility in a video game is good. Of course accessibility in a video game is good. But in what world is the difficulty of a game the same exact thing as giving more options for people who have physical disadvantages at playing video games? There's a difference between, hey, I would really like there to be a colorblind mode for this game, and hey, could you add an easier mode because I suck and refuse to get good? But to make the arguments here on this show, I feel like I'd be wasting my goddamn time because they just need to be said again the next time a hard game is released and gamers TM glom onto it to swing their dicks around. And that right there is the reason this horse is beaten to death each and every time. Let the damn thing walk away. I mean at the very least you're sparing me of making this a 40 plus minute long video so thank you. I'm honest to god so glad you're not presenting any actual arguments. It makes this entire video so easy to dismiss and trash and that's what people are tuning in for anyway. And let me just say this, plain as day, the more accessibility options a video game has, the better. And that's just that. That's just the way it is. This isn't a subjective opinion. There is no debate here. It's a stone cold, goddamn, fucking fact. Literally every game is better when it has more accessibility options. And the more accessibility options literally every game has, the better. No disagreement here. The more options you give people for accessibility, the better product you have. But here's the thing though, when it comes to video game difficulty, that's pretty fucking subjective, isn't it? Especially in the world of modern day video games, where difficulty sliders don't do jack shit, but artificially pad games and take up your time. Because just how driving is a core mechanic of racing games and platforming is a core mechanic of platformers, being hard is a core mechanic of the Souls games. If a hard game is something you're not willing to go through, then you put it down just like you're not willing to play a racer because you're not into racing games. A simple, cold, hard fact, as you say. Don't be coming in here bringing up your memory loss and ADHD when people with actual physical disabilities are beating the game and not bitching. A game's difficulty being its identity is very fucking valid. You think people with disabilities are picking up Elden Ring because they want an easy casual experience? Like, it's never made sense to me that anybody would have a problem with more people enjoying a good game. First of all, more people having a nice time is never bad. Why would you not want other people to have a nice time unless you're a misanthropic shitfucker? Second of all, if you love these games as much as you claim, surely you want more people to enjoy it. Elden Ring is at 14 million copies sold, making it the highest selling FromSoft game of all time. Clearly more people than ever are playing these games, and nothing has been compromised. The vision has remained the same, the theme is ongoing, and people are eating it up and love it. 
But either way, whether other people enjoy the game or not, isn't my fucking business. I can recommend games to people, but I can't make people enjoy them. Adding a difficulty slider would not guarantee you more people will enjoy the game. It's not about not wanting other people to enjoy this game. It's about whether they enjoy it as is or not, because that is what the game is. Let them buy it, let them play it, and if they don't like it, they have millions upon millions of other shit to play. The more successful the game is, the more it reaches people, the more money it'll make, the more content will be made available, the more game you will have to enjoy. Quick, somebody tell him all of that happened with Elden Ring without having to add difficulty options. Plus, the more successful a game is, the more people that it reaches, the happier the developers will be. And do they not deserve to be happy after making you happy? The only people who would, in fact, have a problem with that are pricks. Gatekeeping, elitist, sad little pricks. Yeah, well, be upset all you want. Those uh, quote unquote elitist pricks that just want the game to be hard are the ones buying it, supporting it, and making the developers happy. Not the people who are unwilling to play the game because there's no difficulty options. You can sit here and rant all fucking day about why the game must have a difficulty option, and yet the results of its sales, its reception, its cultural impact have all proven that this game does not need a difficulty slider. It's pretty final at this point. This is what people want. This is how they like it. And those are the people the game is intended for. Not whiny little bitches who feel their enjoyment of something is entitled. And this is why I decided to make no substantive arguments in favor of accessibility today. Because the people who need to hear it explicitly don't want to. They don't care. They're selfish. They only view these games through the single lens of how they want to play it how they engage with the medium, and what they believe is the one true way to experience video games. Anything that dares to challenge or confront that is met with hostility. No, you decided not to bring up any substantive arguments, because when you bundle game difficulty in with accessibility, you're gonna have a really fucking hard time trying to link the two things. So instead, you turn to this shitty straw man, because it's a lot easier for you to take down since you haven't been to the gym your entire life. But isn't it hilarious? how you think you're speaking on the behalf of everyone else. More people can't enjoy it without difficulty options. And yet this is FromSoft's game to appeal to more people than ever before. Your argument holds no weight, only your body. Because on the whole, a lot of these people only know or care about video games. They don't have other interests. Clearly, j clearly Jim doesn't need a bleed build, especially with the amount of subs she's been bleeding with nothing more than her base stats. It's shit like this that isolated your audience. This antagonistic attitude towards gamers for no fucking reason other than pure unfiltered salt. How in the world are you supposed to paint this image of gamers being these absolute pieces of shit when you're the one saying fuck this to any sort of tip people give you? If there's one thing Gamergate taught us. Gamergate. 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 <laughs> Fucking Gamergate! Somebody give me a calendar. How long have I been out since my last edible? With all its gatekeeping, elitism, and hatred of minorities, it's that people with no form of enrichment outside of video games can be right dickheads. You needed Gamergate to teach you that? Anybody so obsessive with any fucking hobby they participate in is perfectly capable of being a dickhead, not solely gamers. And what makes you think the people arguing for difficulty are the exact same group exactly? You have no way of keeping track of each individual who participated in that event. It's quite honestly pathetic to see you try and link this to Gamergate. Years ago, you decided to take Patreon money so you wouldn't become a joke like all the publications you were so critical of. And yet here you are, doing the exact same shit they do. Padding your content so you can just make your paycheck, taking up a huge chunk of space with an ad that nobody's gonna watch, and then wrapping it up by blaming Gamergate on everything. And then bitching and whining afterwards that you losing subs is due to the toxic nature of gamers. When in reality, all you did was continuously isolate them, make them feel like they're not wanted by the person who they felt used to stand up for them the most. You went as mainstream as it gets. 
The only difference is you're doing it about eight years too late. Those who have pinned their entire sense of self on a single geeky medium naturally don't want a diverse range of people to get into video games because then it will reflect how much of an individual they aren't. When loving video games became mainstream, a lot of people who love only video games didn't feel special anymore. What sort of twisted logic is that? This entire timeline is nothing but your own head cannon. It's not that gamers didn't feel quote unquote special anymore. It's that specific video games no longer felt special. All the people who used to bash video games are now the exact same people trying to tell you why video games need more womans, needs more queer characters, needs to bash you over the head every day about what's right or what's wrong. And when you do something like that, Video games are no longer special. They become as unbearable as every other source of media out there. And you'd be lying to yourself if you said it wasn't getting worse. Or endlessly antagonistic and frankly miserable attitudes whenever a new game comes out just puts people the fuck off. But nowhere near as much as your miserable attitude has turned people away from your channel. You're not really in any position to be calling anyone toxic when throughout this entire video we have seen your toxic behavior towards a simple get good meme. People don't even have to say get good, they can just give you a suggestion or tip and it sets you off. You know what they say about people who live in glass houses, right? Which I guess is indeed what you want. You clearly want to limit the number of people who can enjoy these games. You say that as if we have the power to pick and choose who can enjoy this game. No, the only people with that power are the ones who pick up the game and try it. You know, for all of your self-aggrandizing, for all of your representing yourself as a true Soulsborne fan, you're not actually representative of the proper Soulsborne fan base. And exactly what makes you think you are? Do you feel as if your position that the game requires difficulty options is more representative of the community than people who enjoy it for being difficult? You may visibly represent it through the sheer volume of your caterwauling, but you're not representative of what the series is designed for who the series is designed for you're not the goddamn creator of this game jim miyazaki is you should be asking him who is this game for nobody is turning to jim sterling asking what's the point of elden ring and even then different people have different reasons to be playing this game because for as much as it challenges and punishes a player it's a series of jolly cooperation, of experiencing hardship together. Experiencing hardships together is the meaning, and yet you want a good chunk of people not to discover that meaning. You want them to have difficulty options to avoid experiencing those hardships. And despite the ability to invade the worlds and ruin the lives of other players, in the face of its overwhelming challenge, the Soulsborne series is ultimately about not being a fucking dick to other people. Well, if that's the case, Jim, I expect you to never be a dickhead to people who give you a basic tip ever again. The game was designed around other players helping each other, as you say, and yet when the help is offered to you, you're a massive prick about it. You were a dickhead, the Elden Ring community kept you in check, and now you're super salty about it and refuse to take the L. Now you want to sit here and lecture people that you're better at enjoying the game, apparently. I don't see the enjoyment in your eyes, Jim. Let me explain that point. Many, many years ago, when Demon Souls was released, I made this argument that it is one of the best multiplayer experiences. And I wasn't actually talking about any of the cooperative or uh, invasive elements of the game. I was actually talking about the little phantoms you see of other players existing in the world in the same areas as you. If you are unfamiliar, uh, Elden Ring does this as well. Uh, you see uh, very temporary glimmers of other players in the same area as you, uh, performing actions in real time. Just the character models rolling, fighting, exploring, whatever. And I absolutely loved that as a concept because to me, it sent the message that even if you're on your own, you and a whole bunch of other players are suffering together and that to me was a very crucial point of that experience. Uh, you might be facing all of these hardships, you might be facing them on your own, but so is everybody else. 
Well, how is everybody else supposed to experience the same hardship together if they have the option to toggle it off? And even then, not every single person is having the same experience. What may be hard for someone may be a cakewalk for another person. Somebody may have found a solution to an area you're having trouble with. So you link up and play together, or you pay attention to the blood spots or signs on the ground. A difficulty option would make so much about this game pointless, you begin to wonder if people even want to enjoy the same game. Shared suffering, it's better than suffering on your own. I certainly know that when I'm going through a rough, traumatic, upsetting time, I find myself wishing everybody else was. Traumatic, fucking, fucking traumatic. People are traumatized by the Souls games. So yeah, that's what the Soulsborne series has always meant to me. Shared suffering, shared pain. And I think a lot of the people who truly love that series um, sort of embrace. Uh, we see this in the messages that are left on the floor for other players, warning them of impending doom. We see this with the amount of players that actually post up for cooperative play, which is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm very much a dedicated Sunbro. I'm all about the co-op. And that's what I mean when I say that I'm better at video games than you, than all of you. Uh, I am just the best one because I understand uh, video games and you don't. Look, I get it. You had a quota to meet. This video had to be put together as fucking fast as you could so all the points are disjointed. The conclusion doesn't make any goddamn sense, and the effort put forward into trying to make any of it make sense is laughable. But please, for the love of God, maybe if you tried with your videos again, you might start attracting people to your channel again, but instead you choose to continue digging a hole for your channel. If being quote unquote better at enjoying a game makes you better at it, then going by that logic, I'm a better CSGO player than the world's best pro players, because in my mind I feel that I'm better at enjoying it than them. I'll be emailing you very soon, ESL. I expect a million dollar contract with a side of cocaine and bitches. Believe what you want, but people saying the game doesn't need difficulty options is far less elitist than you sitting here and telling us the proper way to enjoy this game. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points and may Marika have mercy on your soul. And with that being said, I hope you like, comment, share, subscribe if you so choose to, and I'll be seeing you bitches in the next video. <laughs> Free Congo sucks ass.